So talking about the life cycle of e-waste, talking about the production stage, um, there's a whole bunch of earth materials, as I said, and that's helpful to our planet. So the best thing that we can do, or one of the best things that we can do, is renew and prolong the life of our tech. Um, so as you saw in the picture earlier, if you used two laptops and repaired them in the middle, rather than using three, you use less emissions. It's amazing that. Uh, but a lot of this, it seems straightforward, but until you really say it. Um, so a lot of this, I might be kind of beating a dead horse, or I might be saying stuff that sounds obvious. Um, but a lot of it, until it was really told to me or until I learned it, it didn't really put two and two together. Um, so. Uh, yeah, if we eliminate the need for a new product to be made, or at least prolong the lifespan of our original tech, then we reduce the environmental strain that it has on the environment. Plus, it saves a lot of money, as a few of our customers have found. If you think about it, a laptop or a computer is just a, basically a plastic case that's filled with individual parts, some of which are easier to upgrade than others, <coughs> Apple. Um, if your device is showing start, showing start to show signs of a decline, it's usually that there's a failing part inside, um, or the other main issue is that what we're physically wanting it to do just can't, can't be done, the processing power isn't there. Um, the problem is, if we took that laptop and upgraded the parts, you can keep using it and you've got less materials, less carbon emissions. And as long as you can carry on with your work, your day to day, you don't really mind. And if it can save you money, then bonus. Uh, but the problem is that a lot of places don't make their devices to be repaired. Um, like Simon was saying there, mobile phones, for example, they're one of the worst ones. Um, there are a couple of ethical companies that have come up with phones that you can change individual parts. Um, definitely worth checking them out. Um, it's trying to get that more into the mainstream and more as the norm um, so that we don't have to replace a whole machine. We can just replace that individual part, say, when your camera lens has is no longer as good as the ones you can get on the market. The phone's absolutely fine. You just want a better camera. Don't have to get a whole new phone. Just replace the lens. Um, so you bought, but if you've already bought the laptop, your old one's dead, you had to fork out for a new one. It's generated emissions, but still that 20% of our usage of the machine, which we can control. Um, there are a few people that probably will be able to talk a little bit more in detail about this. Um, but um, there's a, some of the things that we can do to reduce our daily impact. Um, it, essentially, it's use less data. Uh, it seems silly, but every action we make causes CO2 um, from uploading a website to sending an email. Um, in fact, if you send just one less thank you email each day, you can save up to 16,400 tonnes of CO2 every year. Um, I learned this a while ago, and I'm sorry if I've come across rude, but I don't send thank you emails unnecessarily. Um, plus, it's a really good excuse if you don't want to talk to somebody. Um, so I did have a load of other ways that you can <laughs> lower your impact listed, but I will see if I can share the slides with you later so you can all look at them later. Um, but like I say, it's all fairly logical. If you've got large files, um, a lot of information that needs to be processed or loaded, um, then it's going to take more power and that is in turn going to generate more emissions. So if we can use less data, compress file sizes, things like that, it's going to make a big difference. Uh, the navigation of your website itself is going to not only impact your carbon emissions, but your customers as well. Um, so speak to Roger uh, and he can talk to you about how making your website carbon neutral or at least carbon friendly. Um, and it also makes your user experience better as well. So it will end, end up in you having more leads. Um, I'm going to upset a few of you with this one, but um, how you how you consume your information is also of a big impact. And although it's everyone's favourite form of medium, video is probably the worst. 
Um, streaming online content emits over 300 million tonnes of CO2 every year. And that is the same as the amount of the whole country of Spain for a year, just to give that into some perspective. Um, it doesn't mean obviously we have to just abolish video from our marketing efforts, um, but it is just worth, worth being cautious um, and being mindful about these kind of things. Um, could you convey that idea through audio or graphics instead? Could you have one meeting a week where you do just audio rather than a video call? Um, or can you compress the file sizes before you upload it to your website or to wherever it's going? Making these small changes can add up to a huge difference. Um, and they'll also help to make your computer run smoother, which brings me to the next point. So funnily enough, you look after your computer hardware, it lasts longer. Um, and we all like things to last longer in this day and age when everything costs an arm and a leg. Um, so there are a few things that you could pay us to do um, or you could do it yourself, uh, save yourself some money. I know a lot of you are small business owners. Um, you may not have the money for a whole IT support team. And there's a lot of this stuff that you can do on your own. You can download software that does it in the background and you don't really have to get your hands that dirty. So things like running scans regularly, upgrading your software and your drivers, removing any unnecessary data, so any apps you don't use, all the downloads that have been sat in your files for ages, just get rid of them. Um, obviously, back up what's important, um, preferably one hard and one like cloud-based backup, preferably three. Um, but... Ideally, keeping the file size small is, an idea, is a good idea um, and keeping them organized is also a good idea. Um, if it really is time to give up the ghost and um, you need to invest in a new device, how you choose to dispose of your equipment is, of course, vital and this is where we come in. Um, unfortunately, 75% of electronic waste is not recycled and majority of that is then exported overseas. Um, unfortunately, developing countries choose to import their e-waste from the West and other rich, richer communities uh, because it provides quite a high value revenue for them. Um, but because they are less well off than we are, that's the political way of saying it, um, they don't have the same standardised methods for extracting the materials um, and a lot of the ways they'll do it are just plain bad for environment and humans. I don't want to depress you all too much, um, but I will go into a little bit about the impact that some of these e-waste sites are making. Um, so you have workers, often children, uh, risk their lives to dismantle the valuable metals in our e-waste. They burn the cables to get to, the uh, to remove the plastics, um, which releases toxic fumes and leads to severe health issues, not only for the workers, but the, for the surviving surrounding inhabitants as well. The surrounding ecosystems are to toxic isn't even a word. Um, so the soil from the second largest e-waste site in Ghana was tested and it's actually deemed the most toxic place on earth with Chernobyl coming second. Um, so the, um, the, the heavy metals have then seeped into the ground. Um, there's signs of this pollution in the crops, in, in egg, um, chicken eggs, um, all over the ecosystem. It's seeped into basically every, every part of their living life over there. Um, and these metals, they persist in the environment and they can last thousands of years. So it's not a case of it's hurting us just now, it's going to keep hurting us and it will keep building and building upon each other. So obviously we don't want to do that. We don't want to send it overseas. We want to make sure that we're utilising as much as we can. Um, and that nothing goes to landfill that, well, nothing goes to landfill. Um, and that's where we come in. Um, we take machines, we refurbish them, we repurpose them, and we give them out either as low cost sales or we donate them to schools and charities. Um, this has also allowed us to 
provide technology to a whole new range of people who wouldn't have been able to afford it otherwise. Um, so we've, we've worked with thousands of schools and charities over the years um, to help people that couldn't necessarily get into the digital world, um, they can help bridge that gap. Uh, essentially, our, our, our use of electronics isn't going to go anywhere. We know this. It's going to increase. And the only thing we can really do is make sure that we're trying to be sustainable with our um, how we look at it and how we source it. So when it is time to renew, there are plenty of green options out there for you, such as the, um, the phone that I mentioned earlier. Newer devices are becoming increasingly energy efficient. Um, and a lot of brands are turning to more sustainable materials. But ultimately, the best thing we can do is use them as much as possible and utilize all the parts. Um, a linear life cycle of electronics cannot carry on the way it is. Um, E-waste is one of the biggest issues around the globe. It actually grows three times faster than the human population. Um, and every break in that traditional chain is a step towards making technology more sustainable for everybody. That's a very whip around tour. I'm sorry for the, the absolute mishap, but I will share it all so you can look at it in more detail. Um, but that is essentially how we try to break the chain to make tech more sustainable. And my question to you all was, how would you disrupt the life cycle in your business to make it more sustainable.